I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know as zinc as a nootropic, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Zinc is a trace element that plays an essential role in overall human health and cognition. Zinc is required for the catalytic activity of around 100 enzymes. It's involved in immune response, protein synthesis, wound healing, DNA synthesis, and cell division. Adequate levels of zinc are crucial for growth and development when you're young and required for proper taste and smell. Our earliest physical evidence of zinc for therapeutic use comes from the wreck of the ancient ship Relito del Pazino, which sank off the coast of Tuscany around 120 BC. Archaeologists found the remains of a 2,000-year-old medicine chest containing several tin boxes. In one of the tin boxes were five medicinal tablets about the size of an American quarter and perfectly preserved. The pills contained a zinc compound with ancient writings that tell us it may have been used as an eyewash. Zinc deficiency is common around the world, including in the USA. This deficiency occurs because we don't get, eat enough foods that contain zinc. Your body needs 10 to 20 milligrams of zinc per day because it can't synthesize zinc. You get zinc from eating seafood like oysters and lobster. Beef, pork, and chicken provide smaller amounts of zinc per serving, and it's also present in eggs, yogurt, cheese, and some nuts. But not only don't most of us eat enough zinc-containing foods, many plants contain phylates, which block the absorption of zinc in your body. So vegetarians are particularly vulnerable to zinc deficiency. Now, we'll dive deeper into zinc deficiency and its causes a little bit later in this video on how things go bad, and we'll cover the easily recognizable symptoms of zinc deficiency as well, so you can tell whether you have it or not. Well, first, zinc is an antidepressant. Zinc plays a role in modulating your brain and body's response to stress and depression. More than 100 enzymes in your body use zinc to help make DNA, protein synthesis, and cell division. Zinc is also critical for signaling between and within neurons and other cells in your body. Zinc fingers are present in at least 3% of all of your cells. Proteins that contain zinc fingers uh, act as interaction modules that bind DNA, RNA, proteins, and other molecules. Highest amounts of zinc are found in your brain, particularly your hippocampus. Zinc deficiency can lead to symptoms of depression, aggression, seizures, violence, ADHD, and problems with learning and memory. A study published in the American Journal of Psychiatry shows that malnourished children exhibit a striking increase in behavioral disorders and aggressive behavior. Kids with nutritional deficiency demonstrated a 41% increase in aggression at age 8. At age 17, they demonstrated a 51% increase in violent and antisocial behavior. The malnourished kids weren't getting enough critical minerals like zinc and iron, or the B vitamins they needed to help develop healthy nervous systems. Levels of zinc have been found to be low in those suffering from depression. In fact, the more depressed someone is, the lower the zinc level. Several human studies have demonstrated that supplementing zinc with SSRIs help in the effectiveness of these antidepressant drugs. One double-blind, randomized trial with 44 patients with major depression were randomly assigned to receive zinc or a placebo. At the conclusion of the 12-week study, the researchers found that zinc supplementation together with SSRI antidepressant drugs improves major depressive disorders more effectively than in patients with placebo plus antidepressants. In the second way, zinc is required for the formation of memory. Research in the last decade has shown that the presence of zinc in synaptic vesicles of excitatory neurons in the cerebral cortex and hippocampus regulates synaptic plasticity. Long-term potentiation is a form of synaptic plasticity that has been shown to underlie learning and memory. And zinc in vesicles is critical to the proper function of these brain circuits. 
Zinc deficiency is associated with poor memory, and deficiency impairs signaling of BDNF, which is also involved in long-term potentiation in memory. One very recent study revealed that the presence of zinc changes the dynamics of the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine at the neuron level. Zinc causes the cellular pore to close more slowly than usual, meaning the vesicle stays open longer and releases more of the neurotransmitter molecules. The researchers concluded our results finally provide a connection between zinc and the regulation of neurotransmitter release. This could be important for the formation and storage of memories. And read the reviews of neurohackers supplementing with zinc in many report better energy and focus. Clinical research backs this up, but nearly always when correcting a zinc deficiency. One Italian study investigated whether zinc supplementation could help restore memory in stroke patients. 26 patients took 10 milligrams of zinc daily for 30 days. On day 30 of the trial, researchers found that zinc supplementation significantly assisted in neurological recovery in the stroke patients. An animal model suggests that zinc supplementation may increase resilience to traumatic brain injury for treating anxiety, depression, learning, and memory deficits, deficits caused by traumatic brain injury. In this trial, rats with injury to the frontal cortex were fed either a zinc supplement or a zinc supplemented diet. The rats were also given a zinc injection an hour after the injury. The research team found that zinc supplementation may be an effective treatment option for imp improving cognitive impairment and depression following traumatic brain injury. Zinc deficiency is a problem worldwide, including in countries like the United States, for several reasons. Our modern diet typically includes a lot of grains, which are usually processed packaged grains, uh, products like cereals. Zinc is found in grains, but this type of zinc is bound to phylates naturally found in these grains, which lock zinc absorption in your body. So zinc found in whole foods like grain and legumes are not a good source of this essential trace element. And the zinc you get from eating meat can also be blocked if your meal contains grains or legumes. Eating high carbohydrate foods, especially processed foods, in the USA and other Western countries are one of the reasons zinc deficiency is increasing. If you're vegan or vegetarian, you're particularly susceptible to zinc deficiency. If you have chronic digestive problems, leaky gut syndrome, or drink too much alcohol, you're in danger of zinc deficiency. Now, the zinc deficiency symptoms look for things like brain fog, craving uh, for salty or sweet foods, eating disorders, chronic fatigue syndrome, hair loss, infertility and impotence, hypogonadism in males, hyperactivity like you find in ADHD, uh, delayed wound healing, low immunity, uh, poor concentration and memory. I've got more of these symptoms in the original transcript over on Atropics Expert for this video. Check them out. Any of these problems can happen at any age, including the developing child, and can be a result of not getting an adequate supply of zinc. Zinc plays a critical role in how well your brain and body function. Adequate levels of zinc will increase your immunity and help you fight colds. A Cochrane review concluded that zinc, lozenges, or syrup is beneficial in reducing the duration and severity of the common cold in healthy people when taken 24 hours before the onset of symptoms. Zinc is a potent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, which helps support healthy cell division in a healthy brain. Zinc balances hormones, which have a direct role in not only our sexual health, but in controlling anxiety, stress, mood, and sleep. Healthy zinc levels help lower inflammation and oxidative stress. The endothelium, or thin layer of cells that line blood vessels, rely on adequate zinc levels, supporting a strong blood-brain barrier and cerebral blood flow. Zinc is involved in protein synthesis, which is required for your body to use amino acids from food, needed for neurotransmitter synthesis and providing the energy needed for mitochondria in every one of your brain cells. Healthy energy levels and avoidance of chronic fatigue rely on adequate zinc levels. 
low zinc levels are a biomarker for depression and under conditions of chronic stress you tend to get rid of zinc through sweat, urine, or your saliva. So if you're depressed you may want to try supplementing with zinc, especially if you're on SSRIs or other antidepressants. Research has found antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds work better when stacked with a zinc supplement. Most neurohackers report that supplementing with zinc helps relax them before bed and they sleep better. Recovery from workouts is faster. Many report that zinc helps boost their libido. Zinc first thing in the morning seems to help many with energy and focus throughout the day. Zinc supports a healthy immune system so you can avoid the cold, colds and the flu. And if you come down with a bug, zinc will shorten the duration of the illness. Some neurohackers say that zinc keeps allergies from flaring up. And many with skin problems say zinc supplementation reduces acne because it's anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. And if you're adult ADHD, you may experience a decrease in anxiety or perception of stress and notice a, an improvement in mood. Now one thing to note from all of this research is that improvements from using zinc only manifest if you're zinc deficient. And with our modern diets, chances are you are deficient. We've got plenty more research on how zinc helps the brain uh, in the main transcript for this video over on Nootropics Expert. I've got one study on zinc's role in anxiety and depression. I've got another clinical study on how zinc may relieve the symptoms of ADHD. And I've got another study that is particularly interesting on how zinc may prevent autism. So check out these clinical studies in the transcript for this video. Just click on the link below this video and you'll find it on your Tropics Expert. Recommended dosage is 30 milligrams of zinc daily balanced with 2 milligrams of copper. The best food source for zinc by far is oysters. Trailing far behind is other seafood, beef, pork, chicken, some nuts, and some dairy products. Now vegans and vegetarians take note, don't count on getting any benefit from zinc supplied by vegetables because the phylates in veggies block zinc absorption in your body. Your body needs zinc, but too much zinc is toxic and it's difficult to test for zinc using lab tests. But there is a simple test um, that was first reported in the Lancet that can help you determine zinc levels. The Premier Research Lab sells a, a liquid zinc assay that is available from most local and online vitamin shops. Uh, you taste a teaspoon of zinc assay and depending on um, how the liquid tastes, you can assess whether what your levels are according to, your, to their guide. So go to the transcript for this video. I've got a link through to uh, buying this link, liquid zinc assay test. Clearly, there's a sweet spot for zinc consumption, and uh, more is definitely not better. More than 50 milligrams per day can throw off your copper levels and mess with your iron function and reduce immune function. Zinc toxicity typically happens when you take too much zinc and can result in abdominal cramps, diarrhea, headaches, loss of appetite, and vomiting. Antibiotics like Cipro and tetracycline interact with zinc, inhibiting the absorption of both zinc and the antibiotic. Zinc can reduce the absorption of the rheumatoid arthritis drug penicillamine. To prevent this interaction, you should take your zinc supplement at least two hours before or after you take your arthritis meds. And some uh, diuretics can increase urinary excretion of zinc by as much as 60%. Prolonged use of these drugs can severely deplete your zinc levels. Zinc can raise your blood pressure. And too much zinc for men can be anti-androgenic and will over-inhibit DHT, resulting in symptoms often associated with using the hair growth drug finasteride. Men should also note that too much zinc can dull nerves in, um, in your penis. So you can't feel anything because excess zinc can over-inhibit 
NMDA receptors. Zinc is sold as zinc glutinate, zinc sulfate, zinc asorbate, zinc picolinate, and various other forms. The percentage of bioavailability for zinc varies by form, and I've got a list of these percentages over on the main transcript for this video on Nootropics Expert. For example, zinc asorbate is only 15%, uh, zinc carbonate, 52%, uh, zinc picolinate, which is a popular one in um, zinc supplements, only 20% absorption. So if you're using something like zinc picolinate, 50 milligram tablet, your body may only get about 20% of that zinc for use by your cells. The ratio of copper and zinc in your body is more important than the amount of each. So my Nootropics Expert recommendation for zinc is 30 milligrams a day. And that's my report on zinc. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to NootropicsExpert.com and search for zinc. Or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics over on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or you want to share your experience using zinc, use the comments section at the bottom of the post on Nootropics Expert. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert usually the same day. And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you go. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.